Hey, Clemens. morning how's it going oh, pretty good <laughs> hello hello would um I I find I would so we currently have um the uh discussion on the Google group. Should we put that in this doc? I think it would be easier to like have it in front of us as a doc so people can comment on it. Or should we pull it into a separate doc so that we have it with the two Which? discussions? So we currently have it in um a Google group. I, I just I just put a I just made a um, if you're referring to the user stories then mm -hmm. yeah I just I just made a merge request an hour ago hello Hello, Steve. Here's a link to Clemens PR. So maybe I'll um, share my screen and um, then uh, I can add comments and then Clemens can integrate them post the meeting um, so that he can participate async. Um, I apologize, I wasn't able to. I was out of town traveling for Thursday afternoon to last night. So I wasn't able to chime in, but I did read up on it. So thank you for Clemens for this. So, um, yeah, so what I did is I took the 12, the 12 cases that I laid out for easy, that was mostly all for easy consumption and kind of for people kind of self selecting, which halfway worked um, for a few um, and then consolidated them into four and then added some further um, commentary. So now I have applications that produce, applications that consume, middleware that routes, and then um, frameworks that you know, help you dispatch to handlers and, um, and just generally provide abstraction. Great. So shall so, we just go through them? Oh, go ahead, Doug. I was just going to ask. Um, I, is there any particular reason you put it into the spec itself? Do you expect this to be normative in some way as opposed to sort of a more like reference material? Uh, I um, I didn't know whether we wanted to have that in the spec. I thought it would be, what, didn't we want that in the spec? If we don't, that's fine. I, I'm, I don't even care what document that goes. Okay, it's, I don't, it's not a hang up discussion. I was just wondering, I was wondering what your thought process was, but okay, it sounds like that it's open for discussion. Was, that was, I just was looking for a place. And okay. We had since we had that kind of we had the the require the requirements in the um, the overall goals in the spec. Um, I just put that right below them. Okay, we can talk about that later then. Okay, that's fine. Super. Um. So uh, so who do we have here? Participants. Oh, hey, Austin. 
Hi, Doug. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Clemens. And I don't know how to pronounce Stevo, Stevo? Yeah, Stevo, both fine. <laughs> Super. So let's do a quick round of introductions. My name is Sarah Allen. I'm from Google. Um, and my interest in this is the events that trigger cloud functions. And also, um, I'm in touch with the uh, IoT folks and people around Google who have different purposes for events. Uh, my name is Clemens. I represent Microsoft for everything that's uh, messaging and standards. Um, I'm the architect for um, the messaging team inside of Azure. Um, we have um, a whole fleet of messaging products and we plan to use cloud events or intend to use cloud events for um, uh, use with our services. Hi, I'm Austin Collins. I'm a founder and CEO of a startup called Serverless Inc. We make a very popular open source project called the Serverless Framework. Um, and we have another project coming out uh, called the Event Gateway, which is a vendor agnostic event router. Doug Davis. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I thought you were done. Oh, and we, we hope to use cloud events uh, for our event gateway if we can get this to a, to a version that's usable. So Doug Davis, IBM, heading up uh, our open source activities related to uh, cloud native stuff. Um, and I hear also uh, sort of representing all the various um, many, many messaging type products within IBM to make sure that uh, what we produce here is something, that's, is, uh, something that is consistent and we can then leverage in our stuff here. So just to make sure that we're not doing something that we can't uh, support later in the future within IBM. And I'm Steve from SAP. Uh, a software engineer, building various uh, messaging platforms, and uh, standards are good. We like to apply them to our solutions. They, it makes them possible to connect to the others and extend. Great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So I thought that we could just walk through these uh, four scenarios, and um, I think that basically we're looking for things that would let us know. If we cannot do these things, then we must change the spec. And if something is not required, we may defer to a, like, we may bucket these things. Um, but in any case, um, the focus is what are the things that must be supported in order for this to work? Um, so, uh, so we've had a number of conversations last week and then Clemens pulled together. Um, these uh, these scenarios. So um, I, I, I think we, I'd like to just dive straight into the scenarios and then we can kind of worry about the framing after we get some alignment. Is that good? Yeah. I'm not sure whether I need to read them out loud because you all are very well capable of that uh, reading. Um, what would be interesting is to find out like one by one um, whether, uh, so the one, the, the, they try to capture one group of of application developers who built this thing. So I'm not talking about the persons, but about the artifact that they produce. Um, but um, uh, so I'm talking from basically from the, the, the IA perspective of the application per se. But the first are applications that produce events and basically their perspective. The second is applications that consume events and their perspective specifically also in how they are and what they're interested in and what um, requirements they drive really on the producer. Um, because the, produ the, the distribution here is that, and, and from a requirements perspective, is that producers are dictating what goes in the event because they sit on that information, right? The consumers express the interest of what they need in an event, and then there's middleware between the two that kind of also has requirements um, also on the producer for things that are um, required. And then there's the framework people who have a, um, a few special needs beyond what the middleware would care about. Um, for instance, like how do you do, do a dispatch um, f into um, a particular function? And that's, right. how I, that's how I structured that. So start with the producer, set the context, see what the consumer then wants from that producer, what the middleware in addition wants from that producer, and then what the framework would also might, might also want the producer. That's where it comes from. So question is whether we, um, whether I've captured the producer per se um, well. Um, the fourth paragraph here, 
the produced events might be rendered in a bit directly by the producer or by an intermediary. Um, that's a specifically that's specifically I think interesting for IoT, um, where you have devices that are that are hooked up to LoRaWAN or to um, Sigfox or any of those networks, um, where they do emit events and the events are actually intended to be cloud events, if you will, um, but they can't express them in the cloud event format or anything that we define, um, or they have to would have to be some 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 very compact mapping because the factual message size that you can express is like 12 bytes. Yeah. And um, so there will have to be massive trickery and I'm not sure we even want, want to attempt that. So even though the originator of that event is really doubtlessly that device and with its context. So I, I just want to pause you Clemens because I think you've, you've, you've cap I, I think you gave a really good overview and now we're diving into the details and I think and I'm just I just want to explain I just want to explain to you why that paragraph exists. Yeah, I think that, but yeah. Else, so, for, for two more sentences. And so here's a case where you have a, a network gateway acting on behalf of a device that is the literal producer of the cloud event, but is really not material in uh, for the event itself it's basically just a translator um great so first of all before like what i'd like to do in this meeting is just to die to go through each paragraph and make sure, make sure it's clear and um and that we were aligned on what these things mean but before we do that first does um so personally i think this structure is very helpful um, but does anybody have any comments about, you know, these sort of four categories and um, kind of this approach to explaining the scenarios? I, I like these four categories. Um, I think it covers a lot. These are very broad categories. There's a lot that can go into them. Um, but just using these categories as our conceptual framework for approaching, approaching this conversation, I think, is, is great. It's inclusive of pretty much all the most important pieces. Yeah, I like I like the categories as well. Um, I, my to believe it or not, my, my actual concern wasn't with the categories because I think it does a very good job and keeps it nicely abstracted. Uh, my only concern was I don't necessarily see these as uses scenarios as much as it's more like a description of producer versus consumer and stuff like that. So maybe some wording when I want to do in the intro paragraphs, but otherwise I like the categorizations. Yes, Steve. I like it too. Uh, so especially the first sentence. Uh, yeah, that will take uh, all of these pers perspectives into consideration. I'm not sure that all of them will really be like covered by the spec, but at least verify that uh, this can be uh, applied. All right. Yeah, and so I think we'll have to work on the framing um, paragraphs to explain that the spec isn't going to implement all these things, but enable these things. Yeah. And so that'll take some wordsmithing. Yep. Um, and we'll get back to that because I think that framing it after we have alignment on what it is, it's a little easier. Super. So, um, so let's just go paragraph by paragraph. Um, uh, the first paragraph applications produce events for consumption by other parties. For instance, providing consumers with insights about end user activities, state changes or environment observations, or for allowing, complementing the applications capabilities with event driven extensions. Um, is that clear for everybody? Or does anybody have any adjustments before we? I think it's fine for now, from my perspective. So then um, in the next sentence, I um, wasn't quite sure what a base classification was. Clemens? Yeah, that's the, I'm, I'm trying to explain it with the next, with the next two sentences. You're basically talking topic, <laughs> basically, right? I'm, I'm saying I'm saying there's two there's there's a, either a context yeah I mean yeah ultimately it's a topic right it's yeah. so you have a context in which a the uh, context is something that I, so I'm I'm using these two terms uh, both in in this write up context is something where you have a um, like the device here um, where you have uh, a mount position a room a floor and a building. And, and I'm specifically about the temperature sensor may goes into a mount position. And if that breaks, another temperature sensor goes into that mount position. But the context of the, uh, the, context of the temperature sensor is its mount position. Um, 
that's something that's um, um, a classification is something that's a little bit more abstract. Um, and that's, uh, I'm representing that by uh, the classification by, for instance, league and team, if you have a sports result. Um, I have, um, and I have an example for the sports result um, actually further, further down in the framework section. So what about if we just, I think if we just remove the word base, it would help. Um, and then just add a for example. Yeah, I, have it, I, have, I mean, I have, I have, these are examples, right? Yeah. Just one clarification point. <clears throat> um, mount position. By mount position, do you mean, for example, the angle at which a camera is pointed or the fact that it is camera number three out of four? Yeah, I mean, I mean there is a, there's, a, um, there's a mount in the uh, left, in the left um, far corner of the room. Right. And that's where the temperature sensor goes. And if, yep. you, if you remove the temperature sensor, the next one is also going to go in that mount position. That sets its, set, its context, right? Yep. That, 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 that's what I thought you meant. I just want to make sure because yeah. a newbie reading this might interpret mount position as the direction the camera is pointing. That's not what you meant. Well, that, but that, that's also context, you know. <laughs> but it's not, a ca it's not a camera. It's a temperature sensor. Right. I mean, it could be direction. I mean, it could be whatever. I mean, maybe we'll just say by position, context. by physical that's... position. How about? Say it again. I'll replace it with. Physical, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah, physical position, yes, I like that. Physical much. position, room, floor. No, I mean, but I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to give an example where I'm literally talking about the thing that the temperature sensor goes into and not where the temperature sensor, sensor is. Oh, I see. By <laughs> physical, by. It's the mount. Right. I know. I'm just trying right. to come it's, up with something, another word that it's, might... I think it's the word position that, that might be confusing because position could mean which way you're pointing versus where you're located in the room, right? There are two different ways to interpret position. Okay. By, um... You are not uh, first. You should be able to come up with a better word than me. Yeah, is it, could we say, could we say mount location? Okay. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> No, but I mean, I'm, that could be, I mean, it also could be where it is in the room, right? Well, mount location yeah. fits. I, I just want to make it clear to someone that they're, that, to, so to me, maybe I'm wrong here, but to me, the angle at which the camera is pointing in someone's mind could be a sort of a positional kind of a thing. I don't but know where not, they take the camera off from because it's a zipper. How about fixture? No, no, I, I think, I think, I think location was fine. I think mount location solves it. Well, I mean, I think that, that, um, a location in my mind conveys geolocation. And if that's not what something you want, like it could be that the temperature center also knows where it is as it moves around. If it were to be like, you know what I mean? Like, and if that's something you don't want to convey, I don't think it matters. No. Just, These are just examples. Maybe like uh, remove this one particular okay. and make it simple. That's a good idea. So, um, so. Okay, and then um, the producer application might reside on server hosts or on a device of any kind. So that might be any application. I mean, it's, what, to, what are you getting at? What are you trying to illustrate there? I'm, I'm, I'm saying we're not constraining ourselves to, to server scenarios here. But this could literally run anywhere on a mobile phone. On the producer can be can be anywhere. It can it can be on a server, but it can also be anywhere on any device. <clears throat> Maybe adding that language in would be yeah be uh, helpful. yeah producer um, need not. Um, How about that? The producer could run anywhere, such as on a server or a device. How is that different? It's just um, you just like that better? emphasizing the anywhere rather than specifying 
host like server or device it, you know it's just a based on the yeah. conversation yeah clemens when you i don't uh, when i when i first read this it says um, the same thing it's just okay great <laughs> right. if you feel it says the same thing then i think we're good um and then um I think this is an important paragraph that um, Clemens mentioned in the introduction The produced events might be rendered and emitted directly by the producer or by an intermediary. Um, as example for the latter, consider event data transmitted by the device and so on. Do we need to be clear that this does not change who the producer is to sort of clarify all of our conversations about source? The producer is still the original producer or yes. so I, I yes exactly so the point is the point is the produ the production and the rendering into a cloud events format might be in different places yep I think it's a very important distinction so I'm going to add like the rendering event in a um, uh, by an intermediary. Does not change the semantic meaning of the event, specifically that um, the producer. Okay, so what I've added is the rendering of an event by an intermediary does not change the semantic meaning of the event, specifically that the producer remains the same even if the event were not originally produced in the cloud event format. That's good. Okay. Okay, so that's producing events. What are you, what are you missing? I think that's, is there anything we're missing from event production? We're, we're, but let's if specifically if you're missing anything in that section, then we might come back to we might you might you might see that that requirements are being thrown at it more or less in the for in the in the next sections. Okay, so let's keep going. Yeah. Um, so on to the consumer applications consume events originating from devices and or people and or applications modules instances for display archival analytics workflow processing or other handling. There are all kinds of reasons for why you consume events, and, you um, might, and, and, and from and from different and from all kinds of different contexts. That's the that's the point of this, right? So you may have um, apps or the the, the originator, the, the context you care about really it might be the device or might be a person and might be, or might be an application, and if the event comes from a person, um, the um, the producing application per se, the bits may actually be immaterial. So it's, it's, it's the context that matters. Um, and then you can do a hundred thousand things with it. And I, I specifically call out things like archival because um, um, that, you know, catches things like storage and, and what all of the, all the, the special cases that people express here, what they do with them. So I wonder whether we should just refer to producing applications because that's what we have up yeah, here. The, the point, the point, the point here. Um, hang on, let me. Oh, um, the the point is. So no, this is the perspective, right? This is just a, this is a perspective. The app. This is what the app, the consuming app, cares about, right? It doesn't care. The 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 producer cares about its putting stuff on the wire. From its context, so that other can others can can uh, and help it makes it make its context more whole effectively. That's kind of the motivation for why a producer does that. The consumer here doesn't care as much about what the producer does. It just is um, and what the producer cares about, but it reacts to events that are coming out of them. So it it cares about the contexts about certain contexts that that uh, events come from and whether a producer. Um, and what producer puts them on the wire is not so important for the consumer. 
between the first two paragraphs, I'm curious if the addition of the word platform tool is meaningful or whether it was just in your head at that moment. Yeah, I, I see, I've been, yeah, I had this distinction in the original um, 12 points. Um, I had started doing the structuring, structuring a little differently um, today and um, then fell back in making platform tools and applications really just be a paragraph here. Um, and um, I think the difference is really the perspective of, of what you're doing. Like in the, um, I call them out because they have a technical function rather than a business function, if that makes any sense. Well, the reason, I'm, but it, it kind of jumps out at me because you mentioned platform tools only once and application everywhere else. So either they're the same or they're different. And if they're different, then where does platform tools live differently than applications aside from that one paragraph. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure there's a, I'm not sure there's a difference. If, if we, if we say, um, I think that's addressed monitor, actually, oh, sorry. If we say that the monitoring, a thing that does technical monitoring is really just another app. I'm fine with that and just strike that entire paragraph. Yeah. I mean, I think that's addressed in three and four, the platform tools part of it. Well, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we remove the entire paragraph. I was actually just suggesting we remove the three, the, the three words on line 85. First well, actually, two. I think the whole paragraph is addressed in sections three and four. Like it's redundant and therefore yeah. confusing. Yeah, I think, I think we can drop, we can, I, I'm, I was on the, I, this was the last reminder of a whole, whole set of, set of things that I have in the, uh, um, in the, in the write-up. So I was like, you uh, know. Are you in the trash or not? So I want to make sure I understand. Um, are you suggesting that that second paragraph is all about middleware and not the consuming application? No, no. This is this is about this is about consuming applications, but the consuming applications are not. I'm struggling with the difference between maybe I'm struggling a bit with the difference between you know, what I would call business apps and platform apps. You know, and then, then, then you can always have, make the argument of, well, platform arms are, apps are our business. So, um, but like between stuff that deals with purchase orders and stuff that deals with, you know, um, web server logs, um, th that kind of, that kind of a difference. I'm, and the only thing I, why I put that in here is because people might need to find themselves in that paragraph. And I think that's where the mention comes from, rather than um, a true distinction between business apps and platform apps. You know what I'm saying? Kind of. I guess I guess I'm I'm struggling with understanding the relationship between that paragraph and three and four. I I can see some relationship between four, but three as middleware. I don't see the relationship between that. that. So that's why I'm yeah, No, this is, this is, I, I think of these as platform tools and apps. These are, these are, these are endpoints. You have a fork in the road and you are pulling events into your thing and you're doing platform level analytics in it. You want to do okay. usage stats, you want to do billing, you want to do any of those things. Right. So I think that's that the platform level effectively, that's the, that, that's the, so I don't think they, they, they are, these are still consumers. They are not, this is not middleware. Okay. Well, they could. Like Splunk, right? Is Splunk middleware? No. Um, well, I think that this is calling out specific purposes for the application that yeah. are not inclusive of all purposes for the app. So, like, in a way, you could just add those things to this. Right? Yeah. So, so it could be, it could, you could say that. Um, yes, yeah, so that would make, that would make a whole lot more sense to me. Okay. So, it could, so I can, I can say, I can also, what I can say is go, or um, um, I can go and put the monitoring and providing the, yeah, I can basically to take this tech second half sentence of the, the, that paragraph and just graph that onto the previous one. Yeah, yep, I agree. That's what I'll do. And, and you can write graft just because I like that word. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get to use it much. <laughs> you appreciate those, those words more if you're uh, not a native speaker. I wouldn't have known. 
monitoring the condition and operation of the business solution. So I think that's a that's a nice clarification. So that we could just say I will use that word graft onto <laughs> thank you. Onto <laughs> Just for you, clone. Thank you. It's very nice. Um, but I still feel like if we don't refer to producing applications, then we're opening up. Well, it, it, maybe we're consuming directly from an Angular app, which I feel like is not what we're doing. But why not? If an Angular, I, I think it would be. If an Angular app is an application presuming pr producing consumption by other parties and is in this specification a producer application, then yes. But so, if it's not, then no. So the reason why the reason why I'm choosing the reason why I'm choosing that wording like this is is what do you care is is really is the, the what do you care about as a consumer? Right? If I care about um, I want to have the temperature reading from the from the sensor that hangs in the corner in that in that room in that building. I don't care about the app. I, I don't care about the software that produces it. I don't care about any of those things. I care about that sensor that currently hangs in that slot in that corner. I don't even care about the instance of that device. And if that if that device the device silently, or if that device kind of breaks and a tech walks into that corner. You know, takes a new device, plugs that new device in, uh, in that same slot, I still only care about that data from that place. I don't care about the device ID. I don't care about the identity of that thing. I don't care about the software that's running on it. I simply care about the context that the data comes from. Same thing with the, with the person, right? I don't care about whether you write your, your, um, uh, your comments on an iPhone or on, on Outlook or on whatever you do. I just care about it coming from you. So, so for the context, the application becomes immaterial, but the, the context that the application expresses becomes material. So the application becomes, the application becomes and, and even the device per se, for that particular context interest, Nobody cares about you know the the particular the particularities of the producer. The producer is just one of uh, many that can serve in that particular capacity. That's why I draw that distinction: is that you are, as a consumer, expecting an event from a particular user, really, rather than expecting that event from a particular app. The app, the, 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 the producer app obviously has a completely different, different perspective on all of this because it's all important for itself. But, um, but the consumer doesn't care all that much. Um, so I'm trying to like elaborate on that because it, I like that idea. I think you're getting at the, if I'm understanding this correctly, the um, like the semantic nature nature of the event, right? Um, it's, it's 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 very practically so that if you are having a conversation with someone on, let's say, uh, you know, G -ch G chat or on Set Still Alive um, or on Facebook Messenger or whatever. Um, and you switch between the web interface and the uh, and the phone interface. Nobody nobody really even knows that you're doing something different. But they're in, they're 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 interested in the events that are coming from you. They're not interested in the events that are coming from that particular uh, from that particular phone or from that particular web session. No, nobody cares. So it's really it's the, the, from a consumption side from a consumption side, and that applies to very 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 many use cases. Um, pretty much everything in industrial automation because everything is exchangeable. Um, um, just to, to, to name one vertical, um, do you have a fairly a much more abstract notion of what your interest is in events um, than uh, to go down to the actually app instance or um, you know even device level 
but you ha usually have a more abstract notion of the class of events or the context of the events you're interested in. Um, um, it's not only it's not only the semantic meaning. It's really there's a there's the, the context. The context is a, is a term that's, that's I think is important there. It's not the meaning. It's not the the, the context is the is the uh, um, is the is the top level concept? Um, well, I, I guess I, I don't think there is meaning without context, but that's from my um, yeah. That's so what like I mean. the, the provenance of the event is significant. Um, not, so 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 in, there are cases where the provenance of the event doesn't even matter. Well, how, yes, it, I mean that's that. How uh, my assumption that when you say context is, yes. um, it's the... Um, An event is raised from a context, but that context may, may coexist at multiple places at the same time. And there's multiple, there's effectively multiple holders of that context, if you will, and they publish events on that context's behalf at the same time. But the producer is the one that decides what the what is the providence of the event, right? Like it, for your case, where I'm um, I'm making an edit on my iPhone or my Android or my web yeah. app, right? Like the producer of the event could decide that that's not significant, or yeah, the, the pro producer could have decided that it is and annotate the event with that providence. The 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 the, the producer acts on behalf of that context. So, but now I feel like we're talking about the producer rather than the consumer. Yeah. So this is why I'm. This is why I'm. Well, you started. Um, so that, that's why I'm. So I'm saying. I'm saying the 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 from a consumer perspective, purely from a consumer perspective, the the producer's identity might just not matter, and it's very often that a, the producer's identity as an application instance. Um, actually very rarely matters, but mostly what matters more is the context that the producer is acting up on behalf of. But the producer is determining that context. So therefore, yes. uh, that, I mean, yeah, I don't particularly care what the producer is, but I care all the rules that the producer determines. Yes, so you're pushing, what you're doing here is you're pushing a requirement on the producer to be pretty clear about what that, to express what its context is. And so how would you distinguish content? So like this is semantic meaning of event, right? Like as determined by the producer. Well, wait, so, okay. In, in the previous section though, we already kind of defined context as well as classification. Do we really need to get into that again other than just to say- We, we, have, we, have, said, we have said that there is such a thing. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think we need to say it again. I, I, I'm, I'm a little confused as to why we're wordsmithing this paragraph. We already agreed to merge the two. What more needs to happen? Well, because like, I don't know what it means for an application to consume events from a person. Well, then remove the word person then, or people. Right, so I would, what I had suggested is that we consume events from applications that produce events. Well, no, we, we, pre no, we, no, we, pre we, we consume events from application producers. I mean, I'm sorry, from, from event producers. Well, yes, but... The, we yes. don't need, if, if we need to explain what, what, if we need to say what an event producer is, then we need to go back to the previous section. This section is about consumers. Yes, it's the producers, ultimately the producers produce the event, but here's the question of how much does the consumer actually care about the identity of that producer? Does it care, does the consumer really care about the producer um, and its identity and, and all those things? And it doesn't. The, 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 the consumer's concern is around the con context that the producer is acting on behalf of. That's what this is trying to, uh, trying to say. It's, the, as a consumer- so, I guess the, so the question is, what is the issue with refer, if we try to explain everything that that consumer wants, aren't we just repeating the producer context? No, 
No, because there's a different perspective here. The, applica the application consumes the event original if, uh, originating, let's stick with people, right? What, what that means is, is if I'm, if I'm as a consumer interested in, in consuming events that, that, are, that are coming from people, I will need to go and collect events from all the places where that person that I'm interested in goes and has that same context. So if I'm running, if I'm running an, an app, and, this, and that motivates actually pops up, I'm interested in that person Right, writing into the context of um, um, a chat, a, a, um, a, a chat conversation that I have with them. If I have a chat conversation with them, I don't. I care about what the chat conversation and all the lines that are being transmitted as events emanating from that chat conversation. But obviously, that chat conversation can now exist on um, three tabs. Uh, in three different web browsers and can also exist on my phone and on my tablet and on my PC in an app in six different places, but it's all one chat application. So I care about receiving events from uh, the chat context um, or from that person really in that, in that case and not from in particular those six different kinds of applications. That's the expression, that's what I'm expressing here with consumer. My, my expectation is that I'm getting the, the information from the chat or from the information from the person or the information from, you know, if it needs to be something more specific, um, but not from an application, from, from a specific application instance. I might, and I've made that a case here, application modules and instances, but I might also want to have something from a more abstract con uh, construct um, that is then solvable using um, an intermediary that will help me with that. Okay, so you're, well, this, I, I just want to be clear that like, But that paragraph, I just pasted in there work. I, I'm, I'm a little, I feel like we're getting, we're going down a rattle, I'm not quite sure why. No, well, I think that it seems like, um, Clemens is trying to make a specific point. What, which, what, what did you just paste? Are you in the notes? Where are you? No, I, I'm, I'm in the chat, in the Zoom oh, chat. I pasted it. it seems to me we started off in this discussion looking at the first two paragraphs of section two. And so we, at some point, I thought we agreed to merge the two paragraphs because the word platform tools in there was yes. showing a bit of a curve. So I merged the two paragraphs together. That's correct. That, and that, I'm happy with that idea. Okay. So. But now. Go ahead, comments. Well, so, right, well, hang on. Uh, so, the first part actually originated from event. No, no, no. So, I'm actually not. I'm not. So, I'm not happy with that edit because I didn't see the first part. Because it, what matters here, what matters here, what I'm trying to express, what I'm trying to express is that the consumer cares about the. It doesn't care about the producer itself. It. They, the events are all produced by producers, obviously but it really cares about context. It, the consumer, if, if, you, if everything is one-to-one, -one, right, then we don't need to go and do anything because then we're not having a pop system. Okay, just so, okay, so, so can I make a recommendation though? Because if you go two paragraphs ahead, down to line 92, okay. that you then start talking about basically what the consuming application is interested in, right? And that's, I think, where you should start talking about why context matters and stuff like that. But in the intro paragraph to what a consumer is, I don't think we need to get any more complicated or detailed than to say, they're the receiver of these events that we just defined in, pre in section one. Okay, then, 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 let's, then let's drop the originating from event producers completely. That, because that is then implied. The, the, point, the point that I was trying okay. to make okay. is, right? That's fine. I, I, I'm not, I was just trying to keep it the same wording you had, but if you don't like the word originating, then there. That's fine. Okay, so then we're now.
I just pasted another purpose, another paragraph in there. Sarah, if you want to copy that. You can go and just paste it in there, so I know. Um, so I think it's, but it's not from event producers. No. It's so consumer events, because, because now producers are implied. Well. Um, I would hope we have a relationship back to the first section. <laughs> um, maybe say um, from Clemens. No. What, why? Because that's that's that, that's implied, right? The events can't exist if they're not from producers. Okay. So okay, yeah, drop from event producers. Yeah, they, they consume events. That, that's fine. That works. Okay. Okay. So then this goes into the detail. So consumer application might reside. We already. Yeah, maybe but I can I can adjust that with language. the other one. Yes. See above. So then um, consuming application will typically be interested in distinguishing events such that the exact same event is not processed twice. Identifying, also, can you add numbered list? Just because I think it helps um, discussion for next time. Um, then uh, identify and selecting the origin context or the producer assigned classification. I think that's the point you were making. Yeah. And then identifying the temporal order. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, just... so, so that's so that's one that's where where um, um, let me just make a comment why I express it that way. Um, relative to the originating context or relative to a wall clock, um, I'm so there are cases where you are emitting events um, without having a clear notion of what the wall clock is. Um, and so um, you're um, using some reference thing that is uh, not necessarily an accurate UTC clock. And uh, that's why I put that in here as a, as a thing that you might be interested in. But it really what we're interested in often is not the, the actual time. Right. Maybe we could say like, because it might, I mean, we could say this like, you know, Maybe it's like which could be clock time or sequence number. Yeah, could be a sequence number because the clock we have in there. I think that's a good point because some things can don't have time, but they have sequences, um, and that's come up here as well. So, um, so we have new people on the call, um, Mark and Stanley. You want to just do a quick, um, Mark, you want to let us know who you are and where you're from? Or what, uh, what context makes you interested in cloud events? <laughs> well, I, I've been on the serverless working group for quite some time. Uh, this is Mark Peek from VMware. Great. And um, just where we're doing as a round of introductions, why you or your company is interested in cloud events for the new folks. Sure, it, it's uh, it's important because we we want to be able to have a lot of uh, multi-cloud, cross-cloud connectivities, and uh, we have a project called Dispatch, which is working on cloud events to be able to broker those between services. Great, thank you. And then Stanley. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, so I am here from Oracle. Um, we are also interested in a bunch of scenarios. The well, probably one of the bigger one is the multi-cloud, you know, interoperability of events. Um, one of the things that we've taken a very interesting tact towards is, um, there's no differentiation between our services and customer services in Oracle's cloud. So anything that our services can our services do our customers can reasonably expect to drop in their own service that could do the exact same thing um so we're taking a philosophical statement which is like when services communicate with each other uh events is the language they speak great um so we are 
Um, I'll zoom back out. Thanks for the introductions. Um, I think uh, Doug is capturing things in the notes. Um, so we have, uh, we're talking about the different things a consuming application would um, be interested in and Clemens and I and Doug have talked a lot. So we'd love to hear from other folks in the call, whether um, you have any additions or um, thoughts about these four things. Um, Sarah, we only have about 12 minutes left, I believe, on the call. And I'm wondering if you could just kind of inform everyone why, why this is important again, kind of why we're focused on this right now. Uh, and then also how it's going to help us resolve some of these uh, source conversations. Yeah, um, I think that's a good point. Um, so, what, I mean, I think the, the top level goal is to, we did the, um, the design goals were, um, in my mind, to really distinguish cloud events from other kinds of events, like, you know, just any asynchronous messaging. And, um, and I think that was helpful, but we needed to get one level deeper to really align on how we describe our systems that produce and consume events and allow those things to be decoupled. So um, we're, we're trying to, I think this is a sort of easier way to get at the, uh, a shared language um, before we start defining attributes in the spec. Um, and, uh, and ideally we'd be able to use these as a way to say, um, if we can't do these things, then we must make a change to the spec. Um, and, and that should get us to an interoperable state. Is that a fair summary, Austin, you think? Yes, yeah, I, I think that's great. Um, and just curious, uh, when are we res resuming the event source conversations? Where is that, or when, when is that taking place? So we will, um, we wanna get through these, um, this narrative, um, this discussion, um, we are, talking again at 9 a.m. tomorrow after the TOC meeting. And um, if we have extra time, we'll talk about source. Yeah, I think, I think this, leads, this leads to a source discussion and we should have that very soon because ultimately the, the, what source, um, the resolving the idea of what source is or what source represents uh, will lead us fairly quickly to, um, uh, I think a breakthrough in terms of what properties we really need. I hope they do. It does. So we. Yeah, I, I see this. I'm personally, I'm, I'm really interested in having this clearly resolved this week. Yes, I. Yeah, I'm. I believe the same. I think our goal here is to get this to an initial version right away. Um, I think all this effort that we're doing around the usage scenarios and design goals absolutely essential to helping us. Um, but I also think that just resolving some of these event source conversations and. Uh, quickly, of course, will help us get to that that version sooner. So. Right. So my hope is that this detailing of what a producer and consumer is will then just make it really easy to talk about source. Okay. Um, yeah, I hope that too. Yeah, and at the very least, having the events are such an ambiguous topic. Having a single paper or a single spec that really defines how major industry influencers like Microsoft, Google, IBM, and Oracle, and SAP, and VMware all think about events, I think is, will be creating a lot of value and clarity for a lot of people in general, so. Okay. Shall we then run through more of these points? Yeah, does anybody yep. else have any um, things? And, um, you know, and then I think there's the some cases, right? The application calls back. The consuming application might want to Callback. Um, yeah, uh, that, see, this is that that is not necessarily a callback, and and I'm careful about that. So, some cases, the consumer application might be interested in obtaining further details about the event subject from the original context, like obtaining detailed information about a changed object that requires privilege, access, or authorization. That doesn't mean callback. That means you might be able to come to that context to that to that context and to the subject of inside of that context from an angle that you already know. So um, you get notified through some mechanism that um, a new file has been created in a, in a blog for you, then you have to come through the front door 
for your blog API to go and walk up to that, walk up to your account that you got the alert from, and then walk into that container and find the subject of that of that notification that means that file and get it. That's not a that's not a callback in that sense of, of messaging, but it's really, you, it gives you enough context to go and um, get with your authorized access um, uh, data about that, about that event. And then, um, so that's, a, I think that's, di that's different from, from a callback mechanism. Correct. I was using colloquially calling back yeah, to the originating context and I think the word you have is yeah I'm just I'm just a messenger and therefore I'm triggered by those terms <laughs> okay exactly to the point why these words are helpful um and then uh the last sentence is consumers interests motivate requirements for which information producers ought to include an event okay I yeah, think this is that was a that that's a clarification that I'm not sure we need but it's really it's the producer, it underlines the point that the producer out of their own, out of their own drive might just go and throw some stuff on the wire um, without much structure. But it's really that the consumer's interests are motivating how that, how that information ought to be shaped. And um, it was an interesting point. In, it was an important point in my head. I think it's helpful, right? Because this is grounding the specification, right? Good. That we would not just draw from the point number one in understanding what the producer needs to supply yeah. in the event, but we're drawing from point number two. Yes. So, so this is this is the point where I'm making where like the what the producer puts in the event is really motivated by what the consumer needs. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Clemens, can we go back for a second to uh, the first bullet there on line 103? I just want to make sure I fully understand. Okay. Um, now, you're not talking about additional information within the event context payload itself, are you? No. So, okay. let's, let's say you have just created a new... Um... So, I'll use an example just to chime in with a different okay. vendor. Um, so like, um, so I, the, you know, somebody creates a something in Google cloud storage, but maybe is consuming the event from something outside of Google cloud, right? Inside Google's cloud, we might have a specific way of calling back to Google cloud storage, but there has to be some way to say it was this specific blob that was modified. And then the consumer may want to call into need some kind of a reference, some kind of a context. Yes. That allows them to get more information or act on that object yeah. than was um, potentially in the event itself. Yeah. I had I had a more like a, a business level scenario in mind. Like think of, a, of an HR application that raises an event that a new um, a new uh, um, employee has been um, uh, created in the system. The event may actually raise only as much as an employee ID um, because everything is PII. And then only an application that is authorized to go and get at that PAI is then doing a call into um, the application to get the detail out. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Um, I think actually including that might be helpful. You like that? Okay. I really like that. <laughs> HR is good because AR, everything in, in HR is obviously um, secret as much as we don't like that, but that's what it is. But I, I think I think what threw me was the wording. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, allow me to paraphrase to make sure I'm, I'm fully on the same page as you. The first part, when you say obtaining further details about the event subject from the originating context, what you're I think what you're saying there is, from the context that's in the event, the consuming application may want to go to someplace else, probably the original spot to get more information and no. the mechanism or the, the place it's gonna to go to is within that context of the event. Yes, yes, Got yes. It. okay. And I, I'll, I have to go and, and sit and um, uh, over those paragraphs um, maybe a little bit more. Okay, because the, the way I originally interpreted it was all the information that they're gonna be, that they're interested in is within the event itself. And that's not what you meant, you mean? No, 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 it's not. The event's gonna have a pointer in essence back to someplace else. Yes, correct. Got it. Okay, cool. Um,
And that is really up to the producer, what they choose to put in the event. Yes, it's, and, and they can, they go and withhold information just because they can't share that with everybody in the pops up audience. And then they say, well, if you want to have more, then just come back to me. And, and that's something that I, I have this as might here as a, as a secondary, I, I broke this out as a second thing, mostly because I think this is something that the application really decides and the application needs to go and, and, and deal with as a pattern, but it's not necessarily something that we have to address as a first order construct um, in the standard itself. So, yeah, I don't think it, I actually don't think this will affect the standard, but it's just context for people to think about the cases, right? Yeah, but it's, and it's, this it's, is it's, allowing for somebody to have a reduced amount of information in the event. Yeah, exactly. So because the, the point, the point here is, I think this is a super common pattern, but I also think that the, all the context that you need to go back to a different place um, is split between your application and the payload data. And it's really an application level concern. I just want to call this out as an as a as a common application pattern, but we but one that I don't I don't think we will have to go and address in our common properties. Yeah, yeah I think it, it's just a, it's context because yeah. a lot of that's what we're doing here. We we want to capture the shared context that we've been achieving in the working group meetings. All right, so it's nine o'clock. Um, and I will submit this and so people can look at it and chime in more and then we'll go to the next two sections um, in the meeting tomorrow. And if we get further, then we can talk more about specific attributes. Yeah, I, so think, if people I think had if people. So other people on the call who didn't talk as much, please, please um, chime in if you had additional thoughts on this, particularly on these two sections, but on, on the whole thing um, in between now and tomorrow. Yeah. Great. Okay, thanks, Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone.